Hello friends and this lecture is on lasers and lasers as you know is an acronym for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Lasers have certain characteristics that's all the waves that the lasers produce are in phase both in time and space and this is known as coherence. The waves are of one wavelength and one color and this is called monochromaticity. And the waves can travel in parallel direction without being non-divergent and this is called collimation. So you can actually send, uh, you know, laser beams from, uh, you know, the Earth to any planet or even outside the galaxy. They will keep traveling. So what determines uh, the type of laser? So one thing obviously is wavelength. Like I said, each one has got specific wavelength. The other thing is known as the power density. Power density is basically the energy delivered per unit area of cross-section which is measured in watt per centimeter square. So how powerful laser will be that is dependent on the power density. So this uh, light like a laser's light is coherent and this can be focused into very small spots uh, where you can deliver very high energy and this can be used to cut or vaporize tissue. Uh, low power uh, lasers can, can be used for coagulation as well. You do not need as much energy for uh, coagulation as for touching. So the laser actually consists of a tubing and a tube which is uh, uh, you know about uh, lasing material in it and uh, based on this lasing material we actually call them lasers so this could be a carbon dax laser. Uh, it could be a, a yttrium YAG laser. Okay, so gas, liquid, or solids it can be. And uh, the two sides uh, of them have a reflective mirror, but one side of the mirror, on the one side it is partially transmitting mirror, so that's where the beam of light will come off. And then there is actually energy is pumped into this, uh, to the uh, lasing media, and this uh, energy can be in the form of electrical discharge. It can be as a flash tube, or it can be even another laser. Okay. So this is how it works. So you have a stable atom. You, uh, you know, now uh, throw some energy on it as a form of uh, photon, and this becomes an excited atom. So when it becomes excited atom, it moves to another level. Okay. And when it actually comes down to its uh, uh, resting position, it will release a photon. But if you actually uh, now provide more energy in another photon before this excited atom actually comes to its resting position, then it releases two photons which are of the same wavelength and uh, they actually are in phase so they can actually travel long distances. Okay, so they are coherent. Okay, this is how uh, the laser beams are produced. So if you look at lasers in the medicine, and uh, there are uh, lasers uh, which are in the visible right, uh, range. So these are like Krypton, Argon, uh, Neodymium YAG laser, uh, KTP laser, lasers, Helium Neon lasers. Now these fall in the visible right uh, range. You can see that the wavelength of these uh, are between around uh, 400 to anywhere between 600 uh, or to 700. So these are in the visible line. In, the wavelength in nanometers. And because they fall in this visible range, they can be used to transmit via the optical fibers. And the wavelength also give them a very specific color. So if you look at Krypton, it is blue to red. Argon, it is blue green. And Neodymium YAG KDP lasers are green in color. Helium neon lasers are red in color. Okay. Then you have lasers which are in the infrared or near infrared light. A uh, neodymium egg laser has got a wavelength of 1064 nanometers and uh, this can be transmitted through optical fiber but carbon dioxide which has a wavelength of 10,600 nanometers uh, which falls in the far infrared range uh, this cannot be transmitted through optical fibers so you need a series of actually mirrors uh, to transmit uh, the carbon dioxide laser. So uh, some of these lasers, depending on the wavelength, uh, can only, the, the larger the wavelength, the more superficial it is. So the, the uh, low, lower the wavelength, the deeper it can penetrate. So if you look at carbon dioxide laser, it is absorbed by oil tissues and water. 
So it can be used for general use for precise surgical cutting or coagulation. Neorium YAG laser, uh, YAG stands for yttrium aluminium garnet, these are solid ones. And these are absorbed by dark pigmented tissues, so this can be used for coagulation and uh, tumor debulking. And if you combine the neodymium YAG with KTP, KTP stands for potassium titanyl phosphate. This is absorbed by blood, so again it can be used for general use or for pigmented lesions, uh, you know, hemangiomas uh, kind of thing. Argon is uh, absorbed by melanin and hemoglobin, so this can be used for vascular uh, tissues and they also can be used for any pigmented lesions, excision of pigmented lesions. Krypton uh, is absorbed by melanin and it can be used uh, for general use or for pigmented lesion again. The lasers are also, uh, depending on uh, you know uh, their power, uh, classified one to four, and the class four are very high powered, they're extremely dangerous, and they use energy up to almost 400 uh, megawatt. This can vaporize the tissues very easily. And the lasers which use in uh, for like the laser pointers, these are class one pointers. Okay, but they should still not be actually exposed to the eyes. You should not point them to at, the, at people. So what are the, laser, uh, the hazards associated with use of lasers in the theaters, operation theaters? So a lot of surgeries, ophthalmic surgeries, ENT surgeries actually are done using lasers. And uh, they can also be used in general surgical uh, theaters for debulking or gynecological theaters for debulking tumors. Now, so the hazards can be to the environment, it can be to the patient, and there can be the people or the staff. So this is a classification for that. So if you look at the uh, environmental uh, thing, so we know that lasers are used for uh, vaporizing, uh, you know, papillomas. You know, they have, uh, you know, viruses. They're laden with viruses, and when they are evaporated, they produce something called plume. These plumes uh, can be you know, inhaled by people around and that's why atmospheric uh, uh, contamination, it can cause sealing of viruses in the staff. Uh, so it's not a, not a good thing. They need to use proper filters for that. The patient and staff may be also be, uh, you know, exposed to fire and explosion. If this energy is not misdirected to say, for example, a, a solution which is contain alcohol, they will, that will likely catch fire or even to uh, tissues uh, which are soaked in, uh, say, cleaning solution uh, that can catch fire. Uh, the things like, uh, you know, uh, explosions, explosives uh, uh, conditions, they can be explosions as well if it is in the close environment. So fire explosions are possible. Um, in uh, the patients, uh, because the uh, heat, amount of heat uh, that is generated by laser yeah, it can actually boil the blood and cause embolization. Um, so uh, other is inappropriate tra energy transfer. If the uh, light is actually strikes something which is uh, very reflective, it can actually go anywhere. And um, uh, obviously to uh, hollow viscous, it can cause perforation as well in patients. So what do you do to prevent this hazard? So important thing is the in the environmental factors, so I've talked about the suction and filters for especially for uh, tumors where there is vaporization and plume formation uh, occurs. Uh, then you need to have lasers um, uh, in the you know sign uh, in the rooms where used or the in the OR where used, and the doors and windows they need to be uh, you know completely shielded, uh, except for the carbon dioxide which cannot actually cross through clear glass. Rest of them can actually pass through anything. So doors and windows need to be closed all the time. And uh, other thing about uh, the staff, uh, I will tell in the later on. Uh, the first, the patients, and so under anesthesia, it's important to actually prevent fires and explosion. Uh, oxygen is combustible, and nitrous oxide, uh, yeah, you know, supports combustion. So uh, if you are giving GA, so make sure that the FI2 is uh, never more than 25 percent. You use uh, specific laser tubes, and all uh, the equipment which is used during the use of laser should actually have matted surface. And best thing is to actually use a total intravenous anesthesia in these cases, so that you don't actually have to give a lot of oxygen or, uh, you know, uh, uh, nitrous oxide or other stuff which support combustion. Uh, for the staff, it's important that they are actually trained in the use of lasers. That I don't mean the use of machine laser, but they are they have the technical uh, technological 
uh, information about what lasers do, what uh, uh, harm the lasers can cause. And so they will not then allow other people to come in if they, who have not had training. So training is important. Also, they need to wear specific kind of goggles and that will likely bring us to the OSCE stations uh, here. So first OSCE station is a tube. This is called a laser flex tube. Uh, you can actually see on that that the size of this is seven millimeters tube outer diameter but the inner diameter is like a pediatric tube that means that the metal which is on it is actually very thick it is reducing the size internal uh, diameter to 4.5 the other thing you'll notice that there are two cuffs and two balloons and um, there is a one a blue and white so one of them is is proximal balloon and other is distal balloon and uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, tubes actually have uh, methylene blue crystals so when you actually inject them with water uh, it will form a uh, blue color and this is important when the energy uh, uh, you know falls on the cuff uh, it does two things one thing is that the water will absorb this energy so for short burst because lasers are always in short burst uh, it will absorb the energy so it will not cause any damage to the cuff as easily but if it causes damage to the cuff the surgeon will immediately see the blue Okay, the surgeons are monochromatic like lasers. They see red, they see blue. So they, they can actually see blue and they will know that the cuff has burst and they can inform us. The second cuff will still protect the airway. Uh, there are tubes, uh, you know, you can ordinary tube people use that they wrap it around with uh, a silver, or, sorry, the aluminum foil or copper foil. And uh, these are not the best ones to use because you can actually have areas which are not protected. And uh, the tube actually can actually still uh, call combustion and uh, this can cause severe airway burns. So it's not a good idea. It's better to use laser, uh, specific laser tubes for them. Then there are actually uh, tubes, laser tubes, which have cuffs instead of actually, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, using water or saline in them. Uh, they actually are made of sponge and you can still use water. You can soak them in water, but... Uh, they you don't actually have to infiltrate so there is no risk of them actually being ruptured or but they can still catch fire so that's not uh, the best thing so the next ask here is about the goggles so the goggles are very very important for protecting against the uh, uh, laser for the staff and uh, the surgeon might be actually playing star wars and you know uh, pointing the beam here and there or you it might actually get reflected uh, from a, a surface uh, which is not matted uh, so goggles are very very specific so you can see this is green tinted one and uh, this is used for neodymium yak laser this looks a little bit red and uh, this is for ktp neodymium yak lasers and then this is for the patient so patient's eyes also need to be protected the way patient's eyes can be protected is that either you can use obviously uh, once you have shut them down as you would normally do uh, you can put uh, some saline soaked gauze pieces over the eye and then tape it or you can also actually use shields, metal shields. You can use uh, uh, goggles like this as well. The next one is uh, again a, a goggle uh, which is orange in color. This is you will see in the uh, ophthalmic theater. This is the organ uh, for use for organ. So this is orange color uh, goggles used for organ or krypton. The other thing uh, is about, I told about uh, the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide actually can uh, uh, you know uh, stop by uh, ordinary glass so uh, you can uh, use ordinary uh, glasses but not uh, your uh, you know contact lenses they don't protect you against lasers carbon dioxide laser and also you need to actually have a wraparound protection and the goggles like these shown here you can actually see that they should protect you so the light laser beam can come from any side so you need to actually have wraparound protection uh, for yourself the goggles um, so for carbon dioxide laser, it can be either uh, a normal glass uh, ones, uh, goggles, or it can be, be plastic goggles are actually also fine uh, for them. Uh, since the, uh, since the uh, carbon dioxide is actually not visible to naked eyes, and uh, that's why the surgeon would not know, know where to point it, uh, usually it is combined with another laser. So carbon dioxide is always combined with another laser and that's why sometimes you would actually see that you are actually wearing goggles for that particular laser which is actually the indicator laser so it could be a very low 
you know, it need not be the uh, laser, medical laser. It can be actually a low class laser just to uh, help you, the surgeons, to point uh, the beam of carbon dioxide. So with this, uh, we end the lecture on the lasers. And thank you very much for listening to this lecture.